Hey guys and gals, Vlad here with AVT Astro and today we are talking about the subject of planetary visual observing. For those of you that might not be familiar, I run a little astro blog called avt-astro.com and of course this YouTube channel. So if you're not subscribed, please do consider subscribing. Over the last 25 years, I've had the privilege of owning over 100 scopes, more accessories than I can count. And having said all that, let's get down to the topic of this video. Alrighty guys, so what inspired me to make this video right now is that I was recently a guest on the Cybon Livestream podcast, uh, you know, where I talked about this very subject. I had the subject actually on my list of videos to do for a while already, so right now is a good time to do it. Alright guys, and then this topic, we're going to cover three basic topics, uh, which is uh, the scene conditions and uh, how you can, you know, to some extent affect those, your comfort factors and how that increases your, you know, chances of seeing greater detail, and the equipment factor and, you know, what equipment you can use to kind of increase your chance of seeing greater detail on the planets again. Okay, so let's get to it. Alrighty guys, so I'm going to start with the most important thing, which is the scene conditions. Uh, the scene conditions, you know, just in case you're not familiar, is basically how steady the air is, the atmosphere is, you know, just in general. So I will say that no matter how great of equipment you have, no matter how good of a visual observer you are, or actually really an imager as well, if your scene conditions are not good, you're really just unfortunately not going to see very much detail on the planets. So your local scene conditions will really depend on you know where you, you live in the world. You know some places in the world just typically have better scene conditions. Some places in the world you know kind of where I live here in the northwest where we're usually right under the jet stream so we unfortunately don't have very good scene conditions very often. But there, the good news is that even if you do not have you know really good scene conditions usually there are several things that you could do to affect your scene. So the first thing that you really want to start out with guys uh, which you know might seem like bad scene is actually taking your scope out uh, you know like probably at least an hour before it really depends on the size of the scope but probably about an hour before you start observing to let it either cool down or warm up depending you know like on the temperature difference between your house and uh, you know where, where you're going to be observing now. That's very very crucial guys it doesn't matter how great of a telescope you have if the optics are not equalized to the you know environment outside uh, you're you know you're just going to see an image that's really just kind of boiling over and you're not going to see you know very much detail on the plants at all, at all. so that's one thing that you could do that'll easily even if the scene is not that great increase the chances of you seeing you know better detail on the plants now scene is kind of one of those things that is kind of a tricky thing uh, so typically on a lot of nights even when the scene is not that great in general uh, there will be moments of scene to where you know the image will just snap into like kind of like really clear focus uh, so uh, you know that is uh, something that you could actually you know do and the lucky image capturing if you're doing imaging is kind of what uh, the computer really does or the software does for you kind of automatically now kind of related to scene is your local kind of you know like uh, kind of heating conditions and what do I mean by that uh, well guys so like if you're you know wherever you're observing if you you know you set up typically you know we set up like in the evening right so let's say you set up like a 8 p.m. or something like that and you're looking over like a large you know parking uh, uh, um, lot or something like that that you know heated up from the sun during the day and it's you know radiating a lot of heat during the evening um, that will definitely you know like affect your local scene conditions uh, so if you can avoid like looking over houses parking you know like you know um, lots in or like anything that's concrete that's or that you know kind of retains a lot of heat during the day uh, that will increase your chances of seeing greater detail on the planets especially earlier in the night now kind of going off of that you know kind of general you know theme uh, typically if you can observe later in the night so like let's say like after 11 p.m. like a lot of that like local you know like uh, rate, uh, heat that's been kind of built up in structures or whatever or even like if you're like you know observing over a forest or something I mean there's still some heat there uh, that will increase your chances of having better localized scene conditions all right guys so the next thing comfort factors uh, the biggest thing that you could really do to increase, you know, like seeing detail on the planet 
is uh, extending the amount of time to where you could comfortably, you know, observe the planet. Because again, chances are the atmosphere isn't going to be perfectly, you know, steady to where you could see a really clear image all the time. So the longer of a time that, you know, you spend like looking at the, you know, whatever planet that you're looking at, chances are the more times you'll kind of see those perfect instances of scene. So what can you do to increase your comfort factors? The first and easiest thing, guys, is don't stand, you know, with your telescope. A lot of people, they like to, you know, set up their telescope. I see this at star parties all the time with the tripod fully extended and, you know, they're standing there and, you know, kind of staring into the eyepiece or whatever. Uh, you don't want to do that. Um, so get it, you know, like if you, if you don't have a height adjustable chair, I recommend, you know, getting a height adjustable astronomy chair, but really any like lawn chair or whatever, any kind of chair that you can set up to where you could comfortably sit there and just look into the eyepiece to where you're not straining your neck. You're not like really, you know, bending over. You want to be sitting, you know, kind of like in a neutral position to where, you know, you're kind of looking into the eyepiece and you're not like, you know, kind of stressed out at all in any shape, way or form. The other thing that you could really easily do to increase your comfort factor, especially during prolonged observing, is to not squint, because, you know, typically you're looking again, you know, with one eyepiece, right, is to not squint your eye. If you're like, you know, physically squinting your eye for like 15 minutes, that really becomes, you know, a really big irritant. Uh, so you really do not want to do that. A lot of times for briefer observing sessions, what I do is I actually don't even close my eye, uh, you know, like physically shut it. Like what I'll do is I'll just put my hand over my eye, right? To where, you know, it's just nice and relaxed. It's, I'm not squinting it or anything like that. And that works, you know, for briefer observing sessions. Another thing that you could do that's really inexpensive, and I'll have a link for one of these in the video description. Um, is wear an eye patch, you know, so just put an eye patch on. I mean, it doesn't look glorious, you know, and you kind of look like a pirate, but you know, chances are you're out on eye and nobody's really gonna see you, right? <laughs> All right, and then, so the last thing, you know, this is kind of getting into a little, you know, spending a little bit more money, uh, but you know, guys, if, if I had to give you one tip to take away from this besides, that the scene conditions are the most important thing is that bino viewers will for sure increase the amount of detail that you can see on the plants. So this is still related to the comfort factor, kind of tying into the, you know, like the equipment factor um, as well. But basically, you know, this way, you know, again, you're not squinting because you're using both your eyes. And, you know, just just generally, like, uh, our brain is kind of wired to see with both eyes. So anytime you're looking with one eye, you're just not, unfortunately, going to see as much detail. So bino viewers will for sure increase the amount of detail that you could see on the plants. If I could recommend one accessory for the planets and you're, you know, you want to see more detail on the plants consistently, the uh, pretty much bar none over the last 25 years, the most detail I've seen on the planets, they do have a, you know, like an impact with what telescope that I'm using, but chances are, especially if the scene's pretty decent, I've got a bino viewer out, <clears throat> I'm definitely seeing more details. All right, so and then and now we're kind of definitely kind of transitioning more to the equipment, you know, and a, still a little bit more technique though, uh, factor of the video. Um, okay, so what other things can you do to, you know, see more detail on the plants? Um, many times when I'm observing the planets, I'll be using the zoom eyepiece. This kind of goes back to the scene conditions because that way I could, you know, kind of really maximize the perfect amount of magnification that the scene will support, which is very difficult to do with fixed focal length eyepieces. So uh, zoom eyepieces, I'll have a link to a couple of these, like the batter zooms, one that I really recommend. Actually, the new uh, Saibon SV245 that I recently reviewed, I'm posting in the link right now. And I'll post in the link for this one as well, um, <clears throat> up above uh, to the reviews of these. Uh, both awesome zoom eyepieces. Uh, you'll definitely see, you know, more detail. Uh, if you could kind of optimize the perfect amount of magnification for the amount of uh, for this what the scene will support on that particular night. Okay, so say you're you know you're using your zoom eyepiece. The other thing that I will recommend, guys, is you know like you, you know you get to whatever magnification that the night will support. And typically, guys, you know just in case you're not familiar, most nights of scene will support probably up to about 200 x of magnification, but definitely most nights should support 120. So 120 x I'd, I'd consider it to be the minimum on the planet 
just, you know, to get a decently sized disc. Um, but the closer that you get to 200, and you know, hopefully even above that, if your telescope can support that magnification, we'll uh, definitely show you more details as well. Now, once you're at the, you know, magnification that the scene will support, uh, the other thing that I really encourage you to do is search for focus often. Uh, so this kind of goes back to seeing a little bit, but basically um, I always find that throughout the night, you kind of need to do slight tweaks to the focus. First of all, there's those temperature changes. So the tube of your telescope is, you know, probably contracting or expanding a little bit. Um, so anyway, so usually when I'm doing planetary observing, I'm kind of searching for focus often to kind of really maximize the amount of detail that I could see. So in this video, I've got to cover it because I know people are going to ask me if, you know, if I didn't cover this, what about filters, right? Um, guys, so there's tons of filters out there that you could try to use on the plants. Like many people use color filters to try and increase detail on the plants. I personally don't really find them very beneficial. If you do have a larger scope, let's say like especially like a 10 inch or above, um, I find that having a variable polarizing filter that, you know, you can really adjust the brightness of the planet is very beneficial because, you know, many times, like, especially if you're looking at Jupiter, it's very bright with a larger scope. So having a way to dim it down is really beneficial. So one of these I do recommend, this is like a two inch, you could get them an inch and a quarter depending on what kind of eyepiece uh, that you're using. All right, so the next filter that I personally find the most beneficial on the planets, uh, you know, when I use filters, I don't use, usually use filters very often, is the batter moon and sky glow filter. Uh, so these things, uh, you know, great filter. That's actually a decent light pollution filter as well. But if you're gonna see more detail, especially on Jupiter with the filter, chances are this is it. It also works, you know, pretty well on Mars, works pretty well on Saturn as well. And again, I'll have a link to one of these, you know, in the video description as well. All right, so the other concept that I kind of wanted to cover, which I kind of already touched on, is don't, you know, like, chances are if you go outside and you, you know, you take a look at the planets, right, you're not gonna see much detail. So spend some time, like typically when I'm observing a planet, I'll probably spend like at least 45 minutes to an hour like looking at it because that way I could get again kind of catch those you know moments of you know good scene okay so and lastly the last tip that I'll give you guys which I am terrible terrible at um is actually you know sketching what you're seeing especially on nights of really kind of like better scene when you're actually seeing more details this is really like pertinent like on Jupiter because Jupiter could show like you know a decent amount of detail really during good scene it's kind of sketching the amount of detail. Why sketching? Uh, well, first of all, you know, you have a record of what you sketched, right? The other thing is that uh, uh, basically it's kind of like almost like, you know, like uh, what cameras do, like, like, like image processing does to where like your brain, like, you know, like once you start putting down detail on paper, right, it starts to search for st like new detail that it hasn't seen to where if you're just kind of looking through the telescope, it's not really like, you know, like essentially like building up like more and more detail. Now you're like, Vlad, I'm not an artist, you know, like I, I probably can't sketch anything really well. Um, guys, you know, so I was actually looking through my notes. I don't sketch that often. I, I, and I'm not, that's actually one thing that I'm trying to, you know, like kind of work on myself. Uh, but I did you know, I do have some sketches and I was looking for a good sketch to show you guys. And it was funny because I just really like, they're all terrible. So I just wanted to show you this. I mean, like I have a five-year-old, a eight-year-old and a 10-year-old. I'm pretty sure any of them can draw a better picture of this. So I got to show this to you guys. So this is one of my sketches of Saturn right here. I know, I know, I'm an artist. Um, but anyhow, hopefully you guys found these uh, tips helpful. If you guys have any questions, comments, or anything like that, please leave them in the link below. If you're not subscribed, again, please do consider subscribing, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.